So guys, I am really excited about today's video. Look, I've put out just a ton of information in the past about the differences between American Dobermans and European Dobermans, but this is the first time ever that their behavioral differences have been broken down in such an incredibly detailed way with this exciting new data I have to share with you today. So. You want to know what daily life would be like if you chose an American Doberman versus if you chose a European Doberman? Well, you're about to find out. Guys, here at Doberman Planet, we just completed our very own in-house research program into the differences between these two dogs, and I can't wait to share this data with you. Um, look, what we did was we did a major outreach program uh, through the Doberman Planet Facebook page, Instagram, through YouTube, everywhere we could to locate a very specific niche set of owners of Dobermans. This is groups of people who have experience owning both an American and European Doberman. They have raised both these dogs and they're in a very unique position to compare and contrast their behaviors. Then we had them fill out a very in-depth survey. We ran the numbers and guys, we have data from 82 owners who have raised both of these dogs and we've crunched the numbers and we now understand more about the behaviors of these two dogs than we really ever have before. Not only where they are similar, but also where these two are very, very different. Okay, first up, let's do a little crash course reminder for you guys about the physical differences between these two dogs, because they do look similar, but when you have them side by side, you can see some obvious differences in their physical structure. First up, let's take a close look at the American Doberman. Now, the American Doberman is most often described as kind of a slimmer, more elegant looking Doberman. They average about five to 10 pounds lighter and roughly one inch shorter than their European counterparts. Uh, if you look at their heads, it's usually kind of a narrower head. Uh, the brown coloring in the eyes are usually lighter brown. They have a slimmer muzzle. Uh, the neck is usually a little bit thinner. Uh, they have a smaller chest and their markings in general, their brown colored markings on their body are generally a lighter rust color or lighter brown as compared to the European Dobermans. They also have more of a sharp neck rise typically from the body, uh, a longer toned body, leaner muscle mass, and compact feet. Now let's take a fast look on how the European Doberman differs physically. Now these dogs average about five to 10 pounds heavier and roughly one inch taller than the American versions. Uh, their head is, tends to be a broader, more square head. They have darker brown eyes typically, a thicker, blockier looking muzzle. They tend to have a thicker neck with uh, more of a slow neck rise from the body, a larger broad chest, and the rust colored markings on the dog uh, do tend to be a little bit darker brown in color than the Americans. They also have more of a compact muscular body, overall more muscle mass and larger feet. In other words, you're getting a slightly bigger, arguably more rougher looking Doberman in the European and a slightly slimmer and more elegant looking Doberman in the American. Okay, that's your crash course on the physical differences between the European and the American Doberman, but let's be honest, how these dogs behave on a daily basis is probably even more of an important factor to consider when you're deciding which of these two to get. So let's get onto the really good stuff, the brand new data about these dogs, how these two behave. Now the results of this study on 82 different owners who have owned both American and European Dobermans really revealed some exciting stuff here, guys. And first off, we're gonna start with the all important assertiveness. Now, owners who own both of these dogs were asked how assertive each dog was on a scale of one to 10, one being very shy and 10 being very assertive. And the results were, the American came in at 6.1 and the European at a whopping 7.7. .7. Look, we've always heard the European was more assertive, but guys, that's a big difference. Especially remember too that both are Dobermans. You'd think they'd be very close or even maybe the same in assertiveness, but that's certainly not the case. The headstrong, stubborn, and confident European Doberman definitely lived up to his reputation here. Next up is the all too important training style. Which style of training does each dog respond the best to? Now this was rated on a scale of one to 10, one being positive reinforcement only during training, 10 being firm direction only, and five right in the middle, basically being a mix of both, a mix of positive reinforcement and firm direction. And the results were, 
The American came in at 4.5 and the European at a whopping 5.8. Now look at that. The Americans definitely respond best with a training approach that includes more positive reinforcement than the Europeans. This is really cool numbers, guys, from actual owners who have raised and trained both of these types of Dobermans themselves. Look what they're trying to tell us. They're telling us how to train these dogs, what works best for them. And it makes sense to me that a highly assertive dog like the European Doberman would need more firm direction during training. Next up was age at mental maturity. Basically, at what age does the dog reach that adult-like mentality and tend to calm down? This was a multiple choice question with the various ages listed out. And the results were, wow, very interesting. I, it's actually fairly close. The interesting thing here is when you add up the data from the one and two year categories on both tables, and then you can kind of find out how many of each dog calms down by two years of age, which is generally what is thought for Dobermans. And, that works out to be 61.8% of American Dobermans reach mental maturity by age two, and 58.3% of European Dobermans reach mental maturity by age two. That's extremely, extremely close, but it looks like the American actually has the lead just slightly, although look at the next age, three years of age. It seems like a ton more European Dobermans calm down by three over the Americans. Next up, the all too important energy levels of these two dogs. Basically, how much energy does each dog have on an average day? Now, the scale is from one to 10. Again, one being very lazy, they don't need much exercise at all, and 10 being tons of energy all day long and they need lots of exercise. So, what do you think is going to happen here, guys? I bet you can guess. Here we go. Oh, the American came in at 6.2 and the European at a whopping 7.2. 0.7. Yep, they're both definitely very energetic dogs, but the European certainly takes the cake here by a decent margin. Uh, guys, those people out there who have experienced both American and European Dobermans are telling you, be prepared for lots of exercise if you decide to go with a European Doberman. Now, next up was acceptance of strangers. Basically, how likely is a dog to accept somebody new being brought into the home? Um, this was one I was really curious about. And the scales between one to 10, one being very accepting and 10 being very suspicious of anyone new in the home. And the results were, look at that, a dead even tie, 5.7 for both dogs. They're both right near the middle. So guys, obviously your Doberman either type can be either accepting or very suspicious of new people. Just keep them well socialized and uh, it'll be great. Now, next up was how the dog behaves in new surroundings. Now, this was another multiple choice option that really was focused on how close the dog sticks by you in that type of situation and if they ever leave your side. And the results were, wow, look at that. Okay, uh, look how much more willing the European is to explore their surroundings. Uh, only 22% of European dogs will stick close to your side and never leave as compared to 46% of the Americans. Uh, a vast majority of the Europeans, however, will explore but often check in with their owner. So this is another question that really uh, paints a really good picture of how each dog behaves in certain circumstances. It's no surprise to me that the more confident and headstrong dog uh, will be more willing to explore, but it's nice to have a dog also that sticks close to you. So this is another category showing a big difference between the American and the European Dortmund. Next up was how in tune each dog is with their owner's emotions on a scale of one to 10, one being not in tune at all and 10 being very in tune with their every emotion. And the results were the American came in at 7.9, extremely high, and the European at 7.4, which is also really high, but not quite as high as the American. I think it's clear that the Dobermans in general are very in tune with the owners, which is one thing that actually really helps them excel as a personal protection dog, right? The American does pull a win here. Uh, it seems people who have owned both these are saying that their dogs that are American were a bit more in tune with them than their Europeans. Next up was bonding with family. I thought this was really important to find out how each dog bonds. This is another multiple choice question. So let's take a look at the results. Wow, definitely a difference here between them again. Look at how the American seems to bond a bit better with the family as a whole, whereas the European seems to bond a bit stronger to one specific person. You know, in general, male Dobermans are thought to bond tighter to a whole family, whereas females are thought to bond tighter to one person. So if you really want a dog that bonds super tight to one person, you should consider a female European. And if you want a dog who bonds really well to an entire family as a whole, and if that's really important to you, then you might want to consider an American male Doberman. Next up is off-leash behavior. I just had to get this question in the survey because this is super cool to me. Um, I want to find out how each dog acts when they are off-leash because a lot of you love doing off-leash activities with your Dobermans. Let's take a look at the results here. It's another multiple choice question. And look at that. 
Uh, wow, okay, so we have basically trustworthy and responds to commands off leash, doesn't always listen while off leash, and we never go off leash as the options here. They're fairly close, but my eye immediately goes to that last line of those owners who never take their dog off their leash. Look at that, about 35% of Europeans aren't ever let off their leash, and only 27% of American Dobermans are. So it, it's interesting that the American score is much higher with how in tune they are with their owners, and much more of them are let off leash to do off leash activities by their owners. It makes sense to me, you need a dog to be in tune with you and trustworthy if you're gonna let them off the leash. Now, if you wanna see even more of the stats that we collected here at Doberman Planet about the differences between American and European Dobermans, I will make the PDF of our internal report available for you. It'll be in the description down below. You can take a look there and it goes in a lot more in depth on this. Or you can simply go to our website, dobermanplanet.com slash AVE, which stands for American versus European. And you'll see that same data there laid out in a much more uh, easy to digest manner. I hope you learned something today, guys, with this original research performed only here at Doberman Planet. And remember, if you're seeing this video anywhere else besides YouTube or DobermanPlanet.com, then definitely go up to your browser and type in DobermanPlanet.com slash A-V-E, which stands for American versus European, and get the real scoop on the differences between these two dogs. Don't settle for websites that just regurgitate information that's already out there. Go to the original source for the in-depth original research and information. And thank you so much for watching, guys. Please hit that subscribe button down below. And if you do hit that button, then it means you and I get to hang out next week. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.